Perfect. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm Gabriela Valdez and I'm the Director of Global Education and um, here at the College of Public Health. Uh, and I'm very happy to welcome you on behalf of the Global Health Institute. And um, we're doing this in partnership with the MESCOF Global Health Programs um, and also in collaboration with the Global Health Alliance here. And we're very, very excited to welcome you to another edition of our Global Health Speaker Series, uh, showcasing the multidisciplinary aspects of global health research and global health work. Um, and of course, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Coman uh, Triani, who will be presenting today about community-based participatory action on stunting prevention, optimization in the first 1,000 days of life. Um, Kamang Triyani is an MD, P, MPH, and is a public health, health lecturer at the Warmadewa University Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Uh, she earned her MPH from the University of Arizona Sacrament College of Public Health. Uh, as a researcher, she is interested in global and child health. Uh, particularly stunting, as you will learn today. Uh, and she implements community efforts for stunting prevention, especially in the low-income households, while noting it is imperative to optimize child's first 1,000 days of life. Uh, as a lecturer in the Faculty of Medicine, um, she hopes to transfer awareness and open-mindedness to her medical students that health problems relate to non-health related aspects, including socioeconomics, loss, culture, and environmental factors. And therefore, the approach to solving health problems should be based on multidisciplinary solutions. So welcome, Dr. Triani, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Gaby, for introducing me to this panel. So uh, good morning here from Indonesia, from Bali. Uh, it will be evening on Arizona, I suppose. So uh, thank you. Uh, it's such a privilege for me to be presenting about uh, my current work or project that I have been doing after I finished uh, as a mascot alumni in University of Arizona. So I would like to screen share my PowerPoint. Okay, so my name is Dr. Komang Priyani, or I call MD MPH in uh, US. I just, just often to say it as a doctor in here in Indonesia. So uh, currently I'm working as a lecturer in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences in Wamadewa University, Bali, Indonesia. So for today, I would like to present about the community-based participatory actions on stunting prevention to optimize the first 1,000 days of life. So before I um, sharing about the project that we've been doing so far in the faculty, uh, I would like to briefly share about uh, the definition of stunting because as we know, this is like a unique situations that uh, occurred in developing countries. I believe there's no stunting in the US or in any developed countries. So the stunting is a condition of a failure to thrive on toddlers that occurs uh, as the chronic malnutrition since the mother is pregnant. So it is the chronic malnutrition is started uh, since the mother is pregnant and it like um, following to the early period after given birth. Uh, it is usually called as the first 1000 days of life. So the First uh, nine months is from the mother's pregnancy until the two years of age in the children. And this unique period, the first 1,000 days of life, uh, laying down uh, the foundations for the optimum health, growth, and development across the last span of a uh, so baby of, of a child until their future uh, life. But also, uh, this uh, first 1,000 days of life is also very vulnerability, so how the mothers and how the children are cared during this crucial time will have influence for the child's ability to grow, to learn, and to thrive. 
And then uh, the insufficient attention uh, during these first 1,000 days of life might lose billions of dollars because we know that children is the future generations. So if the somethings keep undertreated or not being uh, with the something, the children will go with a lower um, ability in the cognitive, uh, lower in the persistence to work. So it might uh, lose billions of dollars to lower economic productivity of these children when they are growing in the future. And also, it might also develop some uh, chronic disease in the future. So it also contributes to higher health costs. Um, there are specific areas that need greater attention to preventing starting. So it's not only the approach from the health factors, but um, it also needed uh, from the multi factors to, to interfere to treat or to manage uh, these hunting conditions. And the specific areas um, related uh, to hunting is including the maternal diet and health, uh, including the breastfeeding. Uh, so we uh, promote the exclusive breastfeeding uh, to the mother uh, in the first uh, six months of their babies. And also about the diets in the infant and toddlers, uh, it also related to to the non-communicable disease, uh, to the access uh, for the healthcare services, and also the support from the families, particularly the vulnerable. So the outline for today is uh, first is about the prevalence of stunting in Indonesia. The second one is about the uh, backgrounds of knowledge is the conceptual framework of stunting from the World Heart Organizations. And the third is about the community-based stunting psychotherapy actions that we have been doing in the faculty to prevent stunting. Uh, this project is called the uh, COME, the Community Oriented Medical Education, and also the outcomes of our project. So here are uh, some uh, prevalence uh, of the stunting started from the 2007. And this is like a predictive value of prevalence if we're not treated uh, the something of, or if we have been doing some strategies, uh, we expected that uh, the prevalence will be reducing from this uh, first time in 2007, it, is, it was 36.8. We hope that it will be reduced to 14% in 2024, which is next year. So from this uh, graphic, uh, we might see that uh, the year is not like 2007 to 2008 because at some point um, it is uh, it's difficult or complicated to to assure the mother to to take their child in every month to measure the hate or to measure the hate. So uh, the collecting data is not it cannot be done in uh, like yearly or annually. So in 2007 uh, is the first time that we uh, found there's a high prevalence of stunting in Indonesia. It was 36.8, which is very far from the target that the World Health Organization given below the 20%. It is reducing in 2010 to 35.6, but it increased again in 37.2. From this uh, point of prevalence, it if us in the Roma Dewa University, the Faculty of Medicines, to think of doing some preventions to make this prevalence not that high again. Uh, it keep reducing, but still uh, the number is uh, still uh, above the 20% of the target uh, to reduce stunting. Okay, so before I started to uh, explain about our project with uh, the community-based community participatory actions. I would like to share about the uh, knowledge background of stunting. It is the conceptual framework from the World Health Organizations. So uh, as I have mentioned earlier, the stunting problem is not only caused by the health uh, factors. It is related to another factors uh, during the growth of a children. So from the small scope is from the household uh, factors. So if uh, there is an in inadequate care, the inadequate in breastfeeding and inadequate in complementary feeding, it usually 
uh, cause uh, to chronic malnutrition in a child. And also it's uh, related to the home situations like the environment, uh, the sanitation, food and water safety. And uh, although the mother has given like the complementary feeding to the child in six months and above, sometimes the quality of food is not good enough. Uh, there's not very diverse. There's not enough protein that, that why it can lead to stunting. And also, uh, if the children is tends to get infections, um, actually infection and stunting is like two things that in a circle that happen in a circle. So if a stunting child, um, a stunting child uh, did not have a good metabolism, uh, that's why uh, this stunting child uh, tends to get infection. But when the child, the child is uh, get infections or disease. He or she is unable to uh, to, di to digest their nutrition to keep them growing, but the the nutrition is uh, using for them to heal the infection. So when the infection is not um, treated in these children, they keep doing that uh, chronic malnutrition. And also from the household part, it's about the mother conditions. And from the wider aspect, the community or the nations, uh, all of this inadequate in care, inadequate in breastfeeding, and inadequate in complementary feeding may lead to the lower of education in the parent, in the parents. And also uh, it related to the political economy situations because as we know, if there's a problem or health problem, we need uh, support from the government from the political situations uh, to give uh, strategies to prevent something. And it also related to the agriculture and food systems, the water sanitation and environment, and especially also about the access to the healthcare uh, and also the society of arts of uh, culture. Okay, so about this uh, community-based participatory action to prevent something, uh, for the definition, uh, this action is also been doing as a research that integrates uh, the education and the community actions to improve health and reduce health uh, inequities. So in our faculty, we integrate the uh, education uh, from our medical students, from our lecturer, and we integrate or engage with the community uh, in the locations of our project to improve or to reduce these uh, stunting issues. And uh, CBPR is also a collaborative approach uh, to research the, in, the equitably involved our partners. So we, we engage all the partners to be, to, to do this uh, kind of uh, strategy uh, and process. And it will be, it will give an unique strength uh, for all the partners that uh, in, involved. Uh, in this research. And uh, our program that is do, has been doing uh, to ask this uh, community based participatory action. Uh, the topic, the main topic is to prevent stunting. And the pro program design we call is the COME, the Community Oriented Medical Education. So, in this program, uh, we assign our students to engage in the community. So, they monitor. Uh, since the uh, mother is still pregnant, so they monitor the maternal health status uh, and also the child health status, the nutritional status for the moms and also for the children, the family support given since the mother is still pregnant until the growing of the child, um, and so to monitor the, uh, the child growth and then the child development and also the child development and the immunization especially during the first uh, 1,000 days of life. So this program is, uh, has been done uh, for the students since their third semester until the sixth semester. So it, um, it can cover the first 1,000 days of life. Okay, uh, so here is the background of the COME, uh, like the earlier slides uh, I've been sharing, uh, that the first 1,000 days of life is very critical to create a brighter and healthier futures. So uh, we see that uh, there's a 
problems in the society about the stunting, uh, some of the community might not really aware that stunting is not only about growth problem, but it can lead to um, lack in the cognitive when the children are growing. So what we can do during the first 1,000 years of life is a very is a golden period for the cognitive development in the children. So it's not all it's not only about the lack of growth, but it's also uh, lead to the development of the children. And uh, by that, uh, on the time that we started this COME project, uh, the communities uh, has uh, the inabilities to prevent something. Uh, and also because uh, it's not only works by the community, we as a, from the scholars and also from the government, so hand in hand to, to together prevent something. And then uh, from the society, uh, if this uh, something keep untreated, it might uh, given the chronic disease when they are growing as an adult. And seeing these problems in the society, uh, we um, design this program uh, so that our medical student can participate in the society by monitoring and observing and also analyzing if there is any health problems or issues uh, that is found in the family, uh, they will try to give like health education to the family. And also from this program, we hope that our students can be trained to collaborate with the society because as a medical students, they're not only in the future will be a doctor to patients, but they have also to give back to the community. So we, we design them to uh, get, so they can collaborate with the society. And also, uh, this is like a good time or a good opportunity for the students to implement uh, their knowledge to the society. Okay, here is the um, some uh, the common the CME uh, community engagement that we've been doing. So here we in the faculty is collaborating with the district. Uh, the locations of our program is in Payangan, is in the uh, Gianyar in Bali. So we collaborate with the district uh, to to um, support uh, this program so that they can engage to the uh, sub district uh, and also the primary health care located in Payangan. So from the primary health care, we can uh, get the data of the uh, pregnant mother so that our student can start to observe the health status of her mother. Uh, from uh, since they are pregnant, so they get the data from the midwife that is working in the primary health care, uh, and the midwife uh, usually has a program called Oshandu, or integrated uh, center, to to monitor the health of a mother, to monitor the health of a children or, or a toddler in the community, and then uh, as in the faculty, uh, other than um, Engaging with the district, the primary health care, and the midwife in the Payangan, we also design our students to take part uh, to observe, to monitor the health status uh, of a mother and her children. And after they doing that observation, they also get to report it and discuss it with a mentor, which is our lecturer in the faculty. So in a month, they have uh, two times for discussions with the mentor. Uh, or the tutor uh, to discuss about their observations uh, in the family. So here is a description of the Xiaomi program. Uh, our medical students in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences from Madewa University in Bali are assigned to accompany and monitor the child health during the first 1,000 days of life, started from the mother's pregnancy. So during this is our uh, some documentation of our students. So during their um, monitoring of the mother health status, they try to analyze if the family of the mother or the child has uh, health problems and they try to solve it. Uh, and if um, the root of problem is because of lack of knowledge, then they are giving some health education to the mother uh, related to the uh, health issues they found in the family. And this is the picture of the mothers. This is the midwives, and this is the 
babies that this student has been observed for like two years. So here are the maps of Bali. So we have uh, nine um, regency in Bali. So uh, Wakmadeo University is located here in the south, in Denpasar. And our locations of Siome is in uh, Gianyar. So it's not uh, really far. It's near the Ubud in Gianyar. Uh, it's called the district of Payangan. Um, when we start our program, we find uh, from the epidemiology that uh, the uh, stunting prevalence is uh, highest in Bali in 2013. So uh, we designed a, pro a program uh, to manage this problem and to prevent the uh, prevalence to keep higher and higher. <clears throat> okay, so this is about the uh, COME program, uh, the observing, the monitoring, and counseling during the first 1,000 days of life. So we have uh, some topics that we design in a curriculum during that two years of, of observation from the third semester until the six semester. So in every semester, they can observe, they can cover the um, conditions of the mothers and the child. So during the third semester, uh, the topic is about monitoring the health and risk factor in pregnancy. So they are not only see the health status, seeing the vital signs in the mother, seeing the history of pregnancy, but they also try to to analyze if the mother has a high risk in the pregnancy or in the delivery uh, of, of parto. So uh, in this third semester, they assessing the health status of the pregnant mother, the past history of pregnancy, if there is any difficulty in the latest uh, pregnancy. And also we, uh, our students want to talk about the conditions in the family the family support, and then about the observing the house conditions, uh, the surrounding environments, the water, the sanitation, uh, if there is any uh, tropical disease that might happen in the environment, and also the uh, diets or the daily consumptions in the family. And our, on the next uh, semester, in the first semester, it's the monitoring is in this uh, time, during this time, the labor planning, so it covers the pregnancy, about the antenatal care, whether the mother doing some um, antenatal care to the doctor or to the uh, primary health care, and the screening if there is any high risk uh, still persisted during the pregnancy, and also assessing the mother, mother's diet. And also uh, we give a counseling and we this, uh, the students discuss uh, with the family about the planning for the labor, has uh, the counseling also for the family, for the preparedness of the childbirth. So it's not only about the counseling during the pregnancy, but for the life after the child is born. And also whether the family of the parents has the insurance. Uh, our national health insurance is called BPGS. Uh, it's a uh, security systems, uh, social security system that also include about the health insurance. So if um, the uh, family doesn't have any insurance, we, we, we suggested them to register to the BPGS. So uh, they won't have a higher cost to the labor. So it uh, was uh, covered by the government for the uh, cost of labor. Okay, this is for the fifth semester. Uh, during this uh, semester, the students observing about the postnatal care and also the health status of a newborn. So from the postnatal care, the postpartum, until the newborn uh, to six months, uh, they, the students assess the labor support, whether there is any difficulties, whether there is any blood loss or any health problems happens during the postpartum. And also uh, promote the exclusive breastfeeding, uh, especially the early breastfeeding initiation to get the colostrum, which is very high in um, vitamins, uh, antibodies that is uh, very uh, necessary for the babies. And also uh, observing about the postnatal care, 
the daily intake uh, during the lactations because the uh, intake is higher in the uh, breastfeeding mother than when the uh, when a woman is not pregnant or is not uh, giving uh, breastfeeding to the child. And also about the psychology aspect, because as we know, some mothers may have some psychology uh, stress or baby blue symptoms uh, after the labor. So we might give counseling for these uh, mothers in the family. And apart from the mother's situation, the labor and postpartum, the students also observing the health of the newborn until six months. Uh, the health status uh, to check whether the mother giving a, an exclusive breastfeeding until six months and assessing the newborn care, the baby's growth and development, and also the immunization status. Because if uh, in some culture, if they uh, do not give, do not want to give immunization to the child, it may, it might make the child tends to get infection. So it's very important for a baby uh, or for a child to minimally get the basic immunization program so they are covered uh, to not be easily to take, uh, to get a tropical uh, illness. And on the sixth semester, uh, the topic is about monitoring and stimulating child growth and development. So from the child health, uh, they observe the health status. If there is any uh, infectious disease happen during this uh, age, six to 23rd months, and also assessing about um, the uh, whether the, the child uh, has been given a good or a proper supplementary feeding, uh, how is the portion, how many times or how is the frequency to give the supplementary feeding? How is the food quality? And because this is to prevent stunting, so uh, in every month, our students uh, observing in the family, they're plotting the measure or the, the height of a children to the WHO, World Health Organization's Child Growth Standard, a graphics to monitor the cell growth, whether it is still normal or it reached to uh, standing conditions. It's below in below of minus two of standard deviations, and also uh, as we know that during this period, uh, a children tends to take everything and take them to their mouth. So it's important to to teach or to cons console uh, the mothers uh, for the personal hygiene of a uh, of a child during this uh, period. And also still uh, checking if um, the, immunization, the immunization is completed or whether they has already get the booster uh, of some immunization. And also uh, the vitamin A, because here in Indonesia, uh, in the primary healthcare, we have a program to give uh, the vitamin A to the babies uh, two times uh, in a year. Uh, because uh, vitamin A is not only important for the uh, eye, condition, but it, uh, from some research, it is proof that uh, it can also manage uh, some uh, infectious disease like uh, measles. So it, uh, it is benefit uh, to give this vitamin A to the, uh, to the children who being brought, uh, bring, being brought to the uh, primary healthcare or the Poshandu, the integrated center. And also, uh, in this sixth semester, uh, our students um, monitor about the mother's diet because some mothers might still giving uh, uh, breastfeeding to the children. So whether the diet is balanced during the lactation and also uh, counseling about if the families or the parents uh, choose to have a family planning, choose to have a contraceptive, uh, they try to also about any methods uh, or any con uh, indications or contraindications that leads to the contraceptive methods. Okay, so from all that um, works that have been done uh, to the community to monitor the uh, health of the mother and the child, um, we think, uh, we in the faculty think that uh, maybe it's not enough to only like research about the problems happening in the community 
um, so we um, plan, not plan. We we do some capacity building also to the community to empower the midwife and the village vendors because um, if the Moshandu of the primary health care doesn't uh, have enough uh, measurement to the growth development, it may lead to delay in detection or something. And also, we also uh, give some uh, health education uh, so they know how to, to use the growth measurement for the children. They know how to educate if they find uh, a mother uh, who bring their child to the Poshandu of the integrated uh, care and they detect that um, the children have the stunting issues uh, during like three months, it keeps on the below minus two standard of deviations. Uh, they can give a consultation to the mother how to treat uh, that conditions before referring to the uh, pediatrist. So we empowering the midwife uh, that they have the uh, most opportunities to serve uh, the mothers and the children. And also, uh, it's not only the midwife uh, works, actually. They uh, collaborate with the community, with the village cadres, uh, so they can like uh, easier to engage uh, with the family. So here are uh, our um, program uh, related to the COLP that we give the uh, sum of uh, growth measurement uh, device uh, to the Poshandu, to the uh, to the village. Uh, so there are nine villages in Payangan. So we give uh, some of them with the growth measurement to the uh, midwife. And also, uh, as we know, if uh, there is a incapacity of food security in the family, uh, we need to like initiate about uh, what is food needed for the family to be made for the children so that the children doesn't have to get the uh, chronic of malnutrition. So this is our uh, program that uh, we've been doing after we seeing the problems uh, during the our students uh, observing in the families. Okay, so for now, uh, the current situations uh, that we, we started with 30% uh, of prevalence of stunting in 2013. Yeah, in Bali, 30% uh, in Indonesia and in Bali is very high, it's uh, around 41% in 2013. And from the situation, uh, last two years, the prevalence is uh, very reduced uh, below 20% it becomes 12.1% in 2021. And also uh, in this uh, last year, uh, it is found that uh, Gianya Regency is uh, become a regency with the lowest prevalence of stunting in uh, the area of Bali. So it's only like 5.1% uh, in Gianya. So uh, really hope that maybe our observations during the 2013 might give this impact to uh, manage uh, this prevalence to keep decreasing uh, in Bali or especially in Gianyar or Payangan. Okay, here are uh, uh, the competitions of our students. So as the lecturer in the Faculty of Medicines, uh, I hope that uh, this program is not only beneficial to us to research in this uh, standing topic, but also to prepare our student to be the next practitioner because uh, as a doctor, as a medical doctor, uh, they not only have to treat the patients, but they should prepare to build a healthy community, uh, which is started from a healthy family, and especially during these first 1,000 days of life. Thank you. Uh, terima kasih in Indonesia, Matur Suksma in Bata Bali. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for enjoying. So I give uh, the floor back to Gabby. Thank you so much for a great presentation and congratulations for such a successful program. Um, I want to open the floor and see if anyone has any questions. 
for Dr. Triani. Me, please, Sandra. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was great. Um, so I'm wondering, I know that you mentioned that you're focusing on, on, a, on an area, right? Um, there. Do you, does every woman that is pregnant gets enrolled in the program? Um, since, since when, how do you select the population? Okay. Thank you, Sandra, for the question. Actually, I uh, have uh, uh, audio difficulties. Uh, can you repeat your first uh, sentence of questions? Because I only heard the last part of the uh, question. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was wondering how's the population selected? I know that you mentioned that you're focusing on an area that has a high prevalence of stunting, right? Um, so it's like every mother, like every pregnant mother gets enrolled in the program or how, how they're selected. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sandra, for the questions. So our uh, program is started in the third semester. So it's uh, started during August until next February. So we usually uh, take the data from the midwife in Payangan. So they giving us um, so because the number of our students in uh, in the semester is usually like 100 to 150. So we take a random. So it's a simple random sampling. So we take a random 200 uh, mothers who was pregnant during that month of uh, July or August, and we give in the data to the students to choose which uh, mother they want to visit because. Uh, sometimes um, there is a resistance in mother if they're only connected by phone, like who is calling me. So yeah, they have to visit the family to get that interaction, so, uh, to get that trust from the family to be observing for quite a long time, two years. So yeah, from the 200, uh, the students choosing which family they want to observe. So it's like a simple random sampling given during that period of pregnancy in on August. Any other questions from the audience? One of the questions that I had, um, I was a little bit curious to learn more about who are your key community partners? Who do you work with um, either to recruit mothers or to get that information from the midwives and maybe to refer uh, these families to different resources out in the communities. Who do you think are your strongest partners in this program? Okay, thank you, Gabby, for the questions. So I think, uh, as I said, there is a community-based participatory. So every aspect has almost equal uh, equal uh, portions to be in the part of the program. But if you ask about uh, who is the strongest key person, we can say as the mediator from us in the faculty to the family, it may be the midwife. Because as we I have said before, or from the Sandra's questions before, how can we approach the community? We get the data from the midwife. So the midwife uh, know better about the situation of the mother. And if our students, uh, has some difficulties to approach the family. Usually, the midwife will help to to join the students to visit the the community. And also, uh, because there is a program called Poshandu that is uh, have occurred uh, every uh, occurred monthly, so the midwife has the biggest opportunity to educate the mothers about the program, to uh, educate the mothers about the importance of. Uh, monitor the growth and development of a child. So it can be the midwife that is as a mediator from us in the faculty to the community. L lady, I see your hand up. Yes, can you all hear me okay? Perfect. Hello, Coma. Uh, my name is Lady. Um, I'm an undergraduate at the University of Arizona. I'm studying public health with an emphasis in global health. And I actually recently visited um, Bali 
um, during winter break. And I saw the structure of the community. So I know that you all have the same job. Um, so how um, easy was it to kind of navigate or how difficult was it to navigate um, like uh, this research? Because I know that uh, you all have a very community centric um, type culture. So what was kind of your experience being able to um, interact with the subjects of this research? Um, was it difficult? Was it hard? What were some of your experiences? Because I know that you have a bunch of, so kids are usually with their family. They're usually very community centric. So yeah, I just wanted to learn what your experiences were like. Okay, thank you lady for your questions. And uh, unfortunately I cannot meet you on the winter break. I hope that one day you come to Bali, I can uh, bring you to visit some areas in Bali. So thank you for your questions. Uh, actually, to doing this uh, kind of very wide uh, community research in a, a location of Mayangan, uh, I cannot say it's difficult, but it's more like complicated because every family have their own um, resistance, have their own belief or um, culture uh, that some families are very welcome to be visited by our students. And there are some families that like, no, no, don't visit us. This is a very uh, private life. So uh, what makes it complicated is to, uh, to give the trust uh, for the family that we're not uh, just doing uh, this program as a part of research, that we're not uh, making them as the subject of research. But what we've done is to help them to accompany them during the first 1,000 days of life that if there is any health issues uh, persisted or occurred during that time, we can like early giving uh, intervention. So uh, yeah, it's very complicated to make them believe about what we've done, uh, that we're not uh, making them as a object of uh, research, uh, but with the help, uh, help the midwife and also we have a good relationship with the primary health care and the district uh, because some of our uh, our lecturer in the faculty has a is from Ayangan so it's easier to to get engaged uh, to this uh, community so it's complicated but um, yeah it's the first part is complicated to 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 got the trust uh, to make the family trust us doing this program. But after that, uh, they're very welcoming. They're very happy that we can accompany them during their, so they can uh, like sharing, they can get uh, consultations uh, with the students. And sometimes if the student thinks that the area is uh, high level, they can ask their tutor or the lecturer in the faculty. So the family is being helped with that kind of uh, issues. Thank you, Komang. Thank you, lady. Any other questions from the audience? Actually, Komang, I know I had another um question. Um, so for global health, um, at least a lot of the peers that I know, and I'm pursuing a masters in public health, um, at the University of Arizona, I wanted to know. This is just out of curiosity, not necessarily related to the current um study that you're doing. Um, but do you all have any like undergraduates um, from different countries around the world that are also involved in like the research that you're doing within Bali? Um, and if so, um, I wanted to like reach out to you as well if you're able to share maybe your contact information in the chat um, for potential ways that I could possibly like connect with you or get involved with a study like that in Bali. Okay. Thank you, lady, for a question. So I posted again my uh, email address. So usually Gabby and uh, Miss Apaes contact me through my oldest email, the B421PR. So uh, now I'm uh, using this email, uh, the dr.comang.triani at email.com. Uh, so lady, you uh, can contact me through this email. And for any, uh, so from the uh, background, I get my medical doctor from uh, University of Pajajaran. It is located in Java, in the West Java or Bandung. 
uh, during that time of uh, medical professions uh, in UNPAD, uh, Universitas Pajajaran, uh, my thesis is not uh, about the stunting, but I work um, in a lot of opportunities to get engaged in the community. So in my fifth semester, I get to be placed in the primary healthcare uh, to know about the situations in West Java. Uh, and then after uh, doing that uh, four years of bachelor, I also get the opportunity in the clinical rotations to, to be engaged in the, also the primary healthcare uh, located in different area in West Java is around like eight weeks uh, to be engaged in the clinical rotations. So I uh, studied how to work in the primary healthcare to treat uh, the patients from their very first conditions uh, of illness. Because when I work in the, I mean, when in the clinical rotation, I work in the hospital, it might, I might get only like the follow-up conditions, but the very first uh, conditions of illness uh, can uh, is happening uh, during their visit to the primary healthcare. And also uh, after uh, finishing my uh, medical doctor, I work, uh, I doing like an internship in a primary healthcare in Jakarta, in a uh, um, center of Indonesia in Jakarta. So uh, I've been doing a lot of opportun opportunities to work in a primary healthcare, to engage in the community. That's why I, that's one of my um, reasons to continue to public health because I might find this uh, area is, uh, it's not complicated, but it's just very uh, like holistic. So we're not only treating the health. We also have to consider about the education. We also have to consider about the political, the economic. So uh, we have to collaborate with a lot of aspects. So lady, uh, you can, uh, I'm very happy that uh, if you are, you want to contact me through that email, the doctor.comang.triani at gmail. So we can talk further about this. Uh, any other global health issues. So I'm not only interested in something, but yeah, we can discuss about uh, other global health issues that you are interested. Thank you, Komang. Terima kasih. You're welcome. Great. Any other questions, comments for Dr. Triani? Well, um, on behalf of the Global Health Institute, MESCO Global Health Programs, and the Global Health Alliance, I want to thank Dr. Uh, Triani for your commitment to global health and to the audience. Thank you for joining us. Um, you can access today's lecture. It will be recorded, and we will be posting this on our Global Health uh, Institute website. Um, and uh, of course, I hope you can join us next Thursday, May 4th, for the this uh, last um, academic year's last lecture, where mm -hmm. we'll be welcoming Dr. Leslie Yo Weaver, who will be presenting on anthropological perspectives on global health, um, global maternal health in India. So I hope everyone can yeah. join us. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Triani. We're very happy to have you here. And hopefully you can come and visit at some point in person. Thank you, Gaby. Thank you, everyone who has joining this uh, speaker series. I hope <laughs> I can go back to the US sometimes and visit with you all. Thank great. you very much. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day.